Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to Flight Dispatch at Johannesburg International Airport for our flight uh, SA280 and A340-300 operating at Perth. We're here to pick up our documentation on this flight. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Rod Watkins, the captain on this flight tonight. We have senior captain Ed Deschamps. He's going to be checking us on this route for our annual route check. And the rest of my crew is Charles Lahadi. He's the senior first officer and co-pilot on the flight tonight. And first officer Tabit Harris, who's going to be our relief pilot this evening. Welcome. So we're just going to uh, review all the documentation required for this flight uh, across to Perth, Australia. And uh, it's basically a review of all the um, restrictions on the flight, any notices to airmen, NOTAMs, which would be um, unusable taxiways or restricted airspaces that we might be flying into, as well as our fuel computations and what we need to continue on to our destination or in the event of a uh, weather scenario proceeding on to our alternate with the legally required fuel requirements. So let's get on to the documentation side. Tabitha has just reviewed all of the uh, no terms that I talked about with any restrictions. None so far. Nothing to affect us for the destination and the alternate. Yeah, nothing to affect us as per so Alternately. Okay, it's wonderful. Wonderful. So everything's working on tonight. That's it. Now we'll review the documentation required for this spe specific flight, starting with the weather. Thanks, Charles, if okay. you'd go through that for us. Weather for today out of Joburg. You're happy with what it looks like outside? Kavok, 1600 yeah. Zulu, it was taken. 18 to 24 tomorrow, 1808 Kavok becoming 22 to 24, that's about our time which we might need to come back. Variable at three knots. Eight to 10, it's three, three, zero, 10, and that's tomorrow. Okay, so I see that using runway three, uh, zero, 03 for departure. That's right. Okay, super. For our destination, Perth, it was taken at 11.03, 12 to 18 tomorrow, zero, 08, zero, 12, 10,000, few at 4,500. From the 5th, 1500 this afternoon, 06014, gusting 24 Kavok. From the 6010512, Kavok. Remark, from the 5th, 1500, moderate turbulence below 3000 feet. Okay. Till 060100, so it's through the night. Okay, so it looks like it's favouring 03 for the arrival there as well. Right. Mm. Then we have Mauritius weather in route. Um, it's today, 12, 18 tomorrow, 14013, Dustin 23, 8000, light showers and rain, few at 800. Broken at 1400, broken at 4500 tempo. 15 today to 06 tomorrow, it's our time. Uh, showers of rain, few at 500. Few at 1,200 with some cumulus broken at 1,300 becoming. That's long after our time tomorrow morning. Okay, so that, that wind is also favoring the ILS runway 14 there at Mauritius right with there. a bit of passing rain. Few at 800 light yeah. showers. Our routing takes us down and then up right just above this. And uh, tropicals 35, 36. Yeah, the winds are quite light for this now. Yeah. They're about 50 knots, 45 mm -hmm. knots. Trapper pause at 50, 40. 36, 35, 35, okay. 35. Okay. Most of the route. A little bit of turbulence there. Four. Four, yeah. Okay. Flight level 260 to uh, 370. Okay. For the rest, nothing serious. That's that. at freezing levels. At one zero zero. One zero zero and then uh, ten degrees at eighteen. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so that should be fine. We're probably gonna have a little bit of turbulence as normal on this uh, route. Sure. Just before we start the documentation here, this is gonna be our routing today. Um, on this sector 
you can get extreme westerly winds which are favourable for us going towards Perth and the flying time can vary anything from eight and a half to ten hours. We can pick up 180 knot winds at the upper levels. We're going to be leaving African airspace, well, the African coastline, just to the south of Maputo and then we're routing tonight south of the Madagascan airspace so we're going to be controlled by Johannesburg Oceanic and then proceeding over to Mauritius's control before entering the Australian airspace in Melbourne. Melbourne will be controlling us just about 200 miles before Perth where we'll start our descent and then get uh, handed over. As, the, as you can see these green sectors are our forecasted turbulence. This is a light turbulence that we're expecting so pretty much from uh, about two hours into the flight until about seven hours into the flight we're expecting a little bit of turbulence to warn our passengers off. So now we just want to do the uh, fuel planning for the sector. Okay, 280 from here to Perth on the 5th of August, Econ 23. We've got our performance figure, 34300 Zulu Sierra Sierra X-ray Delta. That's it. Um, compiled, estimated time of departure, 2015, weather on the 5th, 12 o'clock, wind component plus 68, and no alternate wind. 9 hours 10 compared to 8 hours 59, so time's looking good, getting there at 5.25. Then our routing from Johannesburg will depart and use the Xobi 3 Bravo departure to position Xobi, then we'll route to Maputo, and then it's lats and longs all the way through. Random routing, yeah, okay. Random routing all from the way to Keels. to Keels, yeah, okay. From Keels for the Waves 9, to position Waves for the Waves 9 arrival at uh, Perth. Trip, eight, nine hours nearly, 56470 fuel, that checks. 9654, nine yeah, that looks good. Our destination, we've got no holding fuel there. Maneuvering fuel, 407 minutes. Alternate, we've got no alternate because we've got island hold fuel. Okay, so it's a remote destination. Remote uh, destination, plane. island hold fuel, two hours extra, final reserve. Okay. Contingency, 20 minutes, max contingency. Critical fuel, we've got 53 minutes extra. This critical fuel would be a consideration for if we were to depressurize the aeroplane uh, and have to descend down to 10,000 foot above sea level so that we wouldn't need oxygen for the cockpit or the passengers. So it's an extra consideration for our operation. And then take off fuel, taxi fuel 14, uh, final fuel is required is 74,650. Uh, right. Fantastic. Those look correct. It's 54. Is there a mention of a critical fuel in? No, there's no mention of the critical fuel in here, so it's just a consideration of the 9.7 tonnes there. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, that weather is fine for Perth, eh? Yes. We've got weather we've just gone through. Two hours of island holding. I don't expect any more traffic on this route other than Qantas, which has just left. We may get Qantas coming the other way. So, aside from us asking for a block, block uh, altitude, mm -hmm. Do you see any reason why we should take more than CETA requirement? Just, sorry, I forgot to do yes, this. Yes. If we can just have a quick look, this is the maximum fuel that we could uplift it tonight. Okay, we restrict it to landing weight with the fuel. The maximum fuel we can take is 92,290 and the sector fuel required 74,650. Okay. It's a landing weight restriction. A landing weight restriction. This airplane's maximum landing weight is 192,000 kilograms. So we need to bear that in consideration for our landing at uh, That's it. Perth. However, tonight we've got quite a bit of fuel to play with. 17 extra tons. Absolutely. So, can I make a suggestion, <coughs> Johnny? Yep. Um, I don't see a requirement to take much more than we have planned for. Absolutely. 74,650, if we round that up to 74,700 tons, 
Yeah. This is yeah. 700 kilograms, so 74,700 kilograms. Right. And then... Uh, so 69 for... Five tons line. less, and we'll do a DFP once we get into the cockpit. The sure. DFP will be the uh, what we call dynamic fuel planning. We'll get an updated <coughs> zero fuel weight to plan weight without fuel by the company 45 minutes before departure and then we can run these figures again it's all in the interest of saving as much fuel as possible tonight and that's it so 74,700 thank you very much Savit there's uh, no no terms to, to no, bother no us well, interesting in uh, Perth um, the taxiway between November to Charlie, okay. we're on a 2 one. That's been closed for a while now, but it's not no tamp. No. Okay. It's only on the 8th when we get closer. Okay, thanks very much. We'll plan on that with regards to the turn off and order brake usage, but we'll talk about that in the sky. Yeah. There are alternative taxiways oh, into yeah. the yes, international yes, yes, yes. apron anyway. Yeah, there is. They are quite a few. Fantastic. And that's that for me. Okay, gentlemen. That's it from me. That's it from me. Let's go and have fun. Let's take our jet to. Australia. Welcome to the cockpit. I'm the first officer. I'm going to do the safety check, which is the initial check when we get on board. And uh, I'm going to take you through that. Once we're through that, the captain will go on with his checks and loading the system. Okay, so we start down here with the engine starts. Make sure they're all off. That goes to normal. Weather radar is off. So it doesn't look anywhere at this stage. Then we come up here. Landing gear, wipers, external power is on, battery is on, and the APU battery is 27 volts. I do an APU fire test, which checked. Then I come down, start the APU, which has already been started by the engineer. Once that's started and running, which it is now, I go to the APU bleed, switch that on, and I set the cockpit temperature and I set the cabin temperature. Then I go to the cargo, and I set the cargo temperature to normal, 15 degrees, 15 degrees at this stage. That will be re-fine-tuned as soon as we get the load sheet, if there's any special load that needs a different temperature setting. Okay, from there, I come down here, I press recall, see if there's anything coming up on recall, nothing coming up. Status of the aircraft. In-op systems at this stage, that will go away in a little bit of time. Um, and then I go engines, check the oil quantity of all four engines. Then uh, hydraulics, check that the hydraulics are in the normal filling range. Door, and check the oxygen PSI for our supplementary oxygen is good enough. Right, coming down here, flaps, zero. Zero, speed brake, disarmed, and park brakes on. And then just the, because we fly different 340s, we'll just go through a few of the differences quickly. And most important one for me, max landing weight there, 192 for coming back. And then the speeds for turbulent penetration, 260 below flight level 150, 270 below flight level 200, 280 and Mach 0.78. Okay. Happy with all of the wind components which won't affect us tonight. Okay. And that's my side done for now. Fantastic. Okay, basically what I'm going to do is set up the uh, cockpit Airbus way with no lights showing and checking for each panel. To make sure that all the Okay, go ahead. White lights are off. Just I just need to do an engine test. We're going to do, we're gonna do an engine fire warning test here. Yeah? Four fire lights. The squibs are on. Those are on. Three and one. Smoke checks. Sorry guys, mind you pass me the seat up please. We've got a final zero fuel weight that just came through. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. Final zero fuel weight now is 157110. Okay. 157110. So that's 700, 700, 700 extra. Yeah. Let me just grab that and do it. So, 
If you could do a dynamic for us, please, Charles. Okay, and then I'm just going to do a test here. That's the uh, cockpit voice recorder test. And all our reset buttons are in. Coming down. Constraint and flight directors are on. The ISIS is set. These are correct switching. Just down. And there. And then coming to the DC, we're just going to check the charge of the batteries. We're just checking that there's a voltage drop below 60 within 10 seconds. And that's the amperage below 60 within, within 10 seconds. So that's off. Now we're going to set up the uh, flight management and guidance systems. We have three of them on board. Charles is using one for communications at the moment. I'm going to try and upload the uh, data for this flight, which should be with CETA at the moment, which is our provider for our documentation, the same one that we reviewed in our flight operations department. So now we're waiting for the uplink uh, via satellite of all this data. Here's our flight, uh, our, our flight plan has just been uplinked. So it's all been loaded into the computer and that's cross-loaded cross to the number two FMGS as well. I just need to ensure that the IRSs, the initial re uh, reference systems are aligned and that's the position that we're in at the moment. We just double check it with regards to the planning so we haven't got the incorrect one loaded and built in errors. So that's fine. I'm going to put in the first flight level, it's going to be 35,000 feet, at a temperature of minus 48 degrees centigrade. Uh, Charles, could I perhaps bother you for the, that updated, you said a few weight was 157.1. They're using a cost index of minus 10. I'm going to load the departure. Tonight we're using a departure runway of runway 03 left at Johannesburg. 2121 now. Is it gone to 21? Two one, Thank yeah. you. Okay, so we're going to departure from runway 21 right. And we are uh, expecting to do the Xobi 1 Bravo. Xobi uh, 3 Bravo departure. Is that right? Yeah. Let me just, just have a look here. Xobi 3 Bravo. The Xobi 3 uh, Bravo departure. And then the arrival into Perth, we're expecting the ILS into runway 03 with a Waves 9 Alpha arrival. And this is just so that we can compare the fuel required and our planning with regards to the fuel required by the airplane systems. And I just need to put in the altitudes we are going to go to. I'm going to check whatever was loaded uh, in the box and make sure that everything is correct. Is that better? So first I'm checking the total distance, 4714, 4711, that's good, then I'm going to check the departure, so of course we use the Jeppesen for that, okay so what we've got here is our Jeppesen, what we've loaded in the system is the Exobi 3 Bravo which is the anticipated departure for tonight off runway 21 right and now I'm just going to make sure that the JEP and what we've loaded looks exactly the same so Udo tonight Go ahead for 280. we're expecting to route we're still standing by for our dynamic flight plan this way to, uh, on Exobi climbing so to 9,000 feet before we get further climb. Thank you. And that is going to be our transition, Exobi, where we get into our en route routine.
which will be Captain, I've requested a dynamic uh, flight plan. Here. Sorry. Uh, and we're going to exit. We're going to go into oceanic clearance at Exox. At 1,600, so 4,000. It's 4, 400. Okay, can I make a suggestion then that we take this up to 75 tons? 75.2. Uh, That'll be extra 500. 75.2, yes. 75.2. Okay, for an extra 780 kilos. Yeah. Thank you, Alan. What we've done right now is uh, we've been advised by the company that we've got a little bit more freight or passengers than we had planned by 700 kilograms, which That's is going to affect our ideas. fuel burn on the flight. So we've increased our fuel up uplift to, to cater for that. So uh, we've taken an extra 500 kilograms of fuel uh, in this event. Thank you. I'll uh, let you know as soon as we've got a feeling and out. Are you finished with this? No, thanks. Okay. So continuing with the checking of the departure. So I go to flight plan and uh, I just page through the departure and make sure that it's exactly like uh, the departure that we've got on the Jefferson, which is the uh, Exabi 3 Bravo, which is our expected departure for tonight. Okay, so the departure is correct, the total distance is correct, then I'm going to check step altitudes that they've been uh, put in correctly uh, as we step up through the night, as we burn off fuel we become lighter and lighter and thus want to climb higher and higher and higher because the higher we fly the better our fuel consumption. Okay, so that's my initial check done. Oh, that goes down to eight. Eight, eight, yes. Okay, and that's been checked. Okay, so from my side, everything's been checked that uh, should that I should check on the loading of the flight plan. Okay, now that I'm happy that he's double checked on me, I've disconnected the uh, external power. If he comes up, he can take the uh, external away. I'm just going to copy that planning. And um, Charles, I'm going to store the route. Yep. In the active. Uh, what else we are about it? I just wanted to. Uh, we've got nav, nav, and nav. Check. Listen Happy. And nav. Check. So now the aeroplane's being prepared. Now the aeroplane has been prepared for the departure and any refinements we're going to get a later uh, a final load sheet once we've got our final passenger load and freight load and then the load master who's in an office in the terminal building is going to send us our final trimming of the aeroplane and we'll refine whatever we've planned up here. So at the moment the planning requirement for fuel minus what we needed for critical fuel in case of a depressurization was 55.9. That's right. So uh, we've got considerably more fuel than we need. Correct. Are you happy with that? Happy, of course. Are you ready for clearance, Captain? Yeah, please. Okay. Now we're going to request a clearance from the yeah. departure controller. Delivery spring, but 280. From 280, good evening, go ahead. Good evening, it's Lucero Sierra X ray Delta, we're Airbus 343 Alpha 2, flight level 350 for Perth. From 280, Perth, departure 21 right, comply with the Exobi 3 Bravo SID, departure frequency 124 decimal 5. Squawk 2632. 21 right, Xobi 3 Bravo, 124 decimal 5, squawk 2632. Spring by 280. 
Spring Mark 280, repack rate, to report ready. Uh, report ready next, Spring Mark 280. So we're in agreement now that we've set the computers up correctly with our final weights. Now we're going to compute the speeds for our takeoff and then we'll review them. Okay, so I've entered all the data and uh, it's computing at this stage. Okay, whilst that's computing, Charles. Yes. I'm just got, I've got version uh, 1507.5, which is the latest in current. Same so my side. 340 X-ray, X-ray Delta. Checked. I'm ready. Okay, we've got a 340-300 tonight. Zulu Sierra Sierra X-ray Delta, which is the correct uh, tail number. We're departing off uh, runway 21 right at Johannesburg, full length. The wind of 2207, 9 degrees centigrade, QNH of 1030. The runway condition is dry. Takeoff CFG is greater than 28%. Checked. Thrust option toga, config is 2, air conditioning is off and the anti ice is off. Checked and it's computing again. Are you ready? Yes, please go ahead. Config 2, flex 37. V1 133, 147, VR 149, V2 155. Our takeoff limitation is brake energy limited. Engine out acceleration 7005, green dot 254, and max takeoff performance limit weight is 268.3. At the low V1, we've got uh, 1140 stop margin, at the high V1, 209 stop margin. Seven knots on the nose, one knot from the right. Thank you. 254 knots clean at Greece. This is brake energy limiting, so I'm happy to go with a low V1 if you are. Yes, I am. Bearing in mind that the VMCG Long. is uh, 120 knots yeah. and max altitude at the flex of 7994. Check. So uh, I'm now going to insert the speeds that we've just decided to use for our departure tonight with a V1 speed, which is our decide speed of 133 knots, a rotate of 149 knots, and a V2 of 155 knots, which is our initial airborne target speed. Flaps are two, config is uh, triple horizontal stabilizer is 2.9 up. 37, thank you. Uh, this one's F, eh? And a flex temperature of 37 degrees. Right, so I'm going to my side then, and I start this side. Flaps 2, 2.9 up, flex 37, 133, 149, 155, green dot 254, thrust reduction 7010, and acceleration 7010. Engine out acceleration is also 7010. Okay, Charles, this will be a go around to take off. In the event of a decision to stop before V1, I'll call stopping, close the thrust levers, and apply full reverse thrust. Please monitor and call V-cell and reverse the green, then notify air traffic control. I'll bring the airplane to a stop, park the brake until the air, uh, passengers to the cabin crew to stand by. Check. We'll assess action manage. If we need to evacuate, we'll do it on the back of the checklist on the QRH. Check. Otherwise, the engine and operative uh, flight path says continue straight ahead, leveling off at or above the acceleration altitude, but no later than the maximum acceleration altitude calculated by the LPC, yep. which for all intents and purposes is 7992 8000. That's it. Continue climb to MSA soonest and contact ADC. The MSA going out that way is uh, 8400. Checked. So, are you happy that we make, in fact, that 7800 foot is a worst case scenario? Anything to the west is 8-4. Yes. So we'll make the red box 9-0. Okay. Happy? 9 -0. Okay. Now we're going to review uh, our navigation departure. Are you ready for that? Uh, I'll get there now. Just give me a sec to open the Jeppesen. Okay. Okay, Charles, we parked here at Alpha 2. Alpha 2. 
Expected to push the lane interface to the uh, east. Taxi instructions, we're hoping, are going to be to left on to Alpha and then to the full length runway to one right. Yes. There is a uh, hot spot at Hotel, which is the high speed coming off runway 03 left arrival. Okay. And that's also aircraft on a different frequency to what we are. Okay. There's also a hotspot at the threshold of runway 21 right, hotspot yes. 3. Yes. And that uh, will also be aircraft on different frequencies. Checked. The uh, departure that we've programmed in here is the Xobi 3 Bravo departure from runway 21 right. Page is 103 echo, it's effective from the 10th of Jan. Check. And the airport elevation is 5558. Initial climb clearance is 8,000 foot, we've got 8,000 climb there, blue. 8,000 blue. And uh, the FMGS has been programmed and checked, no modifications. That's it. Uh, terrain, the airfield elevation is 5558. We've uh, said the MSA going out that way is 7,800 and we are requesting flight level 350. The computation is for flight level 345 is optimum and maximum we can go to 366. Check. The airplane's fine. There's no no talk, so there's no notification for us for uh, dangerous goods or perishables on board. Yes. And we've put the air off in the forward cargo. That's right. No time wise, there's a couple of uh, uh, taxiways on in that Perth. Side. We'll decide yes. that once, we'll dis discuss that once we're on a descent. 100%. Otherwise there's nothing to affect us here. And um, fuel, we wanted 75.1, uh, we've got 75.1 and the computation was 55.7. That's, That's it. critical fuel. So I'm going to delete, uh, sorry, I'm going to go there. Take the extras. Yep. Root or turns. So what do we got there? Retro It was 20 minutes. Is, uh, 9, 8, 8. Yeah. Are you happy with that? 9.8. Uh, yes, Final that's correct. Zeros. That's correct because we have no alternate. The contingencies. Actually 1.69. Yeah, 1.7 there. 1.7, so that would be actually 10, mm. 11.4. Yeah. Good. That's fine, yeah. But we're going to leave it out. And there's yeah. extra 15. That's at 2 hours 41 minutes. Okay. Could we look at the four star checklist to the line then, please? Oh, sorry. With regards to that, if we have a lander sap red, which means that we've had an engine failure or a critical phase of flight, yes. we need to return as soon as possible. Our max landing weight here is uh, discussed with 192 tons, and uh, we weigh 232.2 tons at the moment. Yep. So we need to dump approximately 40 tons of fuel, and this aeroplane is going to be about just over 1,000 kilograms a minute, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to dump for about 40 minutes. 40 minutes yeah. Bearing in mind that we can come back for an overweight landing, uh, Ed, if I could be so good as to ask you, can you assist there with a overweight, overweight yeah. checklist in the QRH, yeah. if we need it? Question you, all the passengers on board? Done with your briefing, six wheelchairs required, one young person on board, and that's it, sir. Fantastic. We'll let them know. I've spoken to uh, operationally. Obviously, I'm the pilot flying now. Yes. I'm going to go for the middle. We're going to split the, uh, the sleep pattern as we need. Yes. And uh, the crew note to come in on a regular basis. Hashing. Well, their, their uh, request to come in. And um, and now there's there's forms, so they don't have to do that voice thing about have you been in a yes, pilot country sure, or whatever. Sure. They're going to hand it off with the immigration forms. Thanks, Charles. The before start checklist to the line, please. Before start checklist, cockpit preparation. Completed. Completed. Gear pins and covers. Remove. Signs. On an auto. ADOs. Uh, NAV. Fuel quantity. 75,100 kilograms. Take of data. 
is set barrel rate 1030 set 1030 set before we start checking through the line we are pushing stop whenever you're ready thank you very much Charles ground swing by 280 yeah, 280 go ahead Alpha 2, request push and start. Push and start, approve face north. Push start, face north, swing back 280. Go, put your Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, may I release the parking brake? Clear for brake, sir. The parking brake is off. You are clear to push us into the lane to face north, please. The time at 1.5, that's 15 early. And starting order 1, 2, 3, 4, you let me know when I can turn 1 and 2. One, two, three, four, on your discretion, sir. We're facing you north, and all the door panels are now closed. Thank you, starting number one and two. One and two. Gentlemen, you're starting number one and two. Check. We start two engines at a time on this uh, 340. Yeah. Uh, two engines on the same wing. So number one and two engines right now uh, and one and two. have just got fuel on number one and fuel being Thanks. introduced on number two, so there's a lighter. Okay. Now we're just waiting for them to stabilize. The two engines are stabilizing. And now we can start number three and four. Uh, clear number three and four. Three and four. Starting. Starting number three and four. Very first time they were funny quite strongly in one that's going to come late. Okay, I see that. Thank you very much. Now we've got quite a tailwind here, so the uh, N1 is accelerating a little bit late. And what we're doing is putting the engine up. Now we're putting the nitrous on three. and introducing fuel. Thanks. Thanks very much, Anna. The parking brake is now on. Slow. Okay, I've got the tow tow bar man put and hits it. Have to start checking. Must start. Any ice? Oof. He can state us. Checked. Pitch trim. 33,5%. Ready trim? Zero. I'll start check is completed. Okay, thank you very much. The, I have control here of the radius. All clear. Left taxi, please. Spring back 280 taxi. Spring back 280 taxi. Alpha holding point. Spring back 21 right. Alpha holding point 21 right. Spring back 280. Okay, we cleared to, to the uh, holding point by Alpha 21 right. It's check. Clear left. And clear right. And a brake check. Pressure zero. Uh, we've got lots of time, so I'll do the uh, control check once we're out on the taxi alpha. That's great. Line, take off runway. 2 1 right, full length confirmed. 2 1 right, confirmed. Cabin crew advised. TCAS. TARA. Engine start selector. Normal. Packs. Off. 
And that's before takeoff of checklist completed. Thank you. And approach is clear. Not too many lights down here. Uh -uh. I'm just switching this to bright so yeah, that sure. I can see with the uh, light sure. from the back. Sure. Right, spring back to that direction. Yeah, it looks like 74.9. Check. And taking off. Checked. Manflex 37 SRS runway, water thrust blue. Hundred knots, check. Spring back two eight zero six thousand three hundred climbing eight thousand good day. So you get to spring back two eight zero? Climb to flight level one five zero under radar control. Climb flight level one five zero, spring back two eight zero. Flight level is fifteen thousand blue. Speed checked. Flap zero. Have a good evening. Thanks, Sepi. Two three zero five. 
the man 018, right heading 120, the uh, short 90, so the full one today. Set standard. Set standard. Set standard. Set standard. Now checked. After stack of climb checklist says landing gears up, flaps retracted, packs on, barrel rev. Standard set. Standard set. After take of climb checklist completed. Thanks, Charles. What's happened now is the air traffic controllers have actually taken us off the departure and cleared us straight to the entry point for the uh, RBSM Oceanic, which is positioned Exobi. And we're going direct there at the moment. Flight 20, good evening. Climb to flight level 350. Climb to flight level 350, spring back to 80. Flight level 350, blue. Check. Now another five off to So now we've taken off, we've used. 2,200 kilograms of fuel already. We've accelerated up to an indicated airspeed of 317 knots, which giving us a ground speed of 280, uh, 385 knots. And we've cleaned the airplane up, and uh, we'll transition at around about 30,000 feet to a Mach number, which is a Mach cruise, a uh, percentage of the speed of sound at that altitude and temperature. At the moment, we are cruising at 35,000 feet above mean sea level, 35,000 here. The computers are telling us that that is our optimum level. We're actually 500 foot below it. So we could actually climb a little bit now, but the correct altitude we can go to is 37,000 feet. What we can consider doing is a, asking for a block altitude that we can fly between, normally they give us between two and 4,000 foot. So we can try and use that for avoiding uh, areas of turbulence. We've just entered the oceanic area for Johannesburg at uh, position Exox, and that's to the south of Madagascar. This over here is the island of Madagascar. Over there, there's the coastline of Africa. And we're just coming up to a position 41 degrees east in longitude. And we're going to transit across the southern Indian Ocean at a latitude of 31 degrees south, all the way to Perth, where we'll enter actually a little bit north of Perth's airspace and then transit a southerly direction. Now this route, we normally fly to any destination with a suitable or adequate alternate. That's all done on planning before we depart by the dispatchers, which we audit, and it has to have uh, acceptable weather conditions at our destination as well as the alternate airport um, for a period one hour before to one hour after our expected landing time. That's a, a, a regulatory um, condition. So we normally fly with a, um, an uplift of fuel in excess of what we require on that sector in order to get to that alternate should we need to go there. This is quite a unique sector in that Western Australia has Perth down in the south here which has got two runways that are acceptable for our operation. And if I could show them to you the main runway is runway 2103. It's, uh, it's the longest runway, and it's um, the one that we'll probably be landing on this morning, tomorrow morning. There's a very short cross runway. This is used when they've got very strong northeasterly winds. Uh, it's very short, so generally we don't try and use it. Now, if this airport was to close for any reason, normally being weather related, because this is Mediterranean weather that we're going to, and frontal systems pass through at regular intervals, reducing the visibility 
uh, down to what could be below our required minimums for landing. Now, Australia doesn't have anything better than Category 1 landing facilities, so we basically require a uh, 550 meter runway visual range and a 200 foot cloud base to land on the runway at Perth. That's assuming that we can use an instrument landing system. The only other alternate that we could actually use is up to the north here, in the northeast, northwestern tip. It's a place called Learmonth. Now, at the moment, Learmonth doesn't have suitable firefighting capabilities for this category of aeroplane. Aeroplanes being categorized by the amount of passengers that they carry and their weight. So, bearing in mind that Learmonth won't be acceptable to us, the next acceptable alternate is Adelaide, which is across the bite here. And that's approximately three hours of flying. So in order to make that uh, alternate, we would have to uplift in the region of 20 tons of fuel or 20,000 kilograms of fuel extra. And they've come up with a way of saving for that. And we use Perth as what they call a remote destination. So before departing Johannesburg, we uplift an extra two hours of fuel, which uh, would give us sufficient holding here for weather to clear and then make an approach into Perth. Charles, could I just see the seat uh, of flight plan there? And uh, when we did our planning at the dispatch office, that extra two hours is reflected in the flight plan here as 9,780 kilograms of extra fuel or two hours of flying. And that is considerably less than the extra three hours or 20 tons that we would have to uplift were we to use Adelaide as our alternate. Bearing in mind that Perth is a, uh, the forecasted weather for our arrival time tomorrow is better than Category 1 conditions. Um, a little bit later, as I said, we're going to try and climb up to the next, next level of 37,000 feet above mean sea level or flight level 370. And that'll increase our, uh, or decrease our fuel burn considerably. At the moment, uh, as I said, we burnt 12,700 kilograms of fuel. And the engines are using 110 kilograms a minute. So we are burning 110 kilograms of fuel for every minute that we're flying. We want to try and get that down to about 90 kilograms, uh, perhaps 80 kilograms once we get to our final cruise altitude. Uh, that also is obviously dependent on the uh, weight of the aeroplane. Sorry, yes, that 110 kilograms per, uh, per minute is per engine. So 440 kilograms of fuel a minute. So we're already an hour and 38 minutes into the start, and we've been airborne for one and a half hours, and we've used 12,800 kilograms of fuel. A large percentage of that was on the departure and the takeoff. Uh, because we had lower altitudes, a lot more drag, and uh, we were configured with our gear out for a little while, as well as flaps. On this total sector, we're expecting to burn 56,400 kilograms of fuel. Uh, well, what we're using at the moment, it's quite, uh, quite interesting. We have the cap capability to obviously go back to um, Durban or Maputo, or Johannesburg with the fuel that we have on board at the moment. There's an acceptable uh, en route alternate at 
and Tenerivo uh, in Madagascar. And then just to the north here and the east of Madagascar are the two islands of Reunion, which unfortunately we can't use at the moment. I don't think uh, it's not it's, uh, uh, hours of operation or not for now. But Mauritius would be open to us. And at the moment, Mauritius is 1140 nautical miles away. So about three hours, just under three hours of flying. At any given stage, we're obviously monitoring uh, the weather of those alternates. So should we need to, for any unknown reason, divert, we would uh, be able to program it into the FMGS and uh, do the relevant approach into Mauritius. The, um, the trick here is to obviously uh, threat manage. So this is an acceptable management style to alleviate a diversion. Being a four-engine aeroplane, uh, the um, operation under a three-engine condition is not detrimental to us at all. Our, our extreme consideration would be a two-engine operation because we'd have to uh, descend to a much lower altitude. Our fuel would, fuel usage would increase, and then that's going to limit our alternate airfields. Uh, many years ago, I came on a 747. This route, you can pick up extreme winds. Uh, they run in a region of 180 knots, or a little under 280 kilometers an hour. And we picked them up well south of South Africa. So leaving South Africa down to the south here, we would route into the, what they call the Roaring Forties. And when you come back from Perth, if you route that way, the chances of seeing the southern lights, which not many people have seen, which are those lights in the uh, Antarctic region, are uh, considerable. And many of my colleagues have seen those lights. You have similar ones up in the Antarctic, uh, sorry, in the Arctic. Uh, but we're not routing that way tonight. We're routing a little bit further north. Starting from 40 south, you can start seeing it in the distance. 40, maybe 45 south. It obviously depends on the time of year. But um, it's actually just ionized uh, uh, reaction in the atmosphere and it's uh, very prevalent in the polar regions, the uh, South Pole and the North Pole. And more prevalent in winter months, winter being in the Southern Hemisphere from March to September. So the opposite to your Northern Hemisphere. The most Southern route that we've ever operated is about 41 South, which is Probably, let me see if I can get 41 south here. Okay, there's 50, so there's 41 south. 41 south, and that's 31 south. So another 10 degrees south of where we are. These islands are the islands at um, Prince Edward and Marion Island, which are actually protectorates of South Africa. They don't have airfields, and they are serviced by Antarctic supply ship, the SA Gullis II. And that makes voyages down there about every two or three, uh, three times a year. And they have a whole lot of scientists down there, very rich in marine and animal life. But uh, desolate, no people down there. So we would only operate probably in the 40s, no further south. Um, The, uh, there are aeroplanes that operate into the southern polar regions. Each country's got a couple of uh, bases down there, or a base down there. Um, the New Zealanders and the Australians, the Americans, the South Africans, and the uh, Russians. I think the Chinese have also opened a base down there. Do you know anything about it, Charles? No. But that's specialized aircraft operations only. Obviously very cold, 
Uh, I've been very lucky to go down there to the to the Antarctic, but uh, not by air. So we're expecting to start running into a little bit of upper air turbulence. It's just to the south of us at the moment. That's the green. And then we'll pick up some in about two hours' time when we are about 600 miles, 800 miles south of Mauritius. And we're expecting that to last for a considerable period of the, the remainder of the flight. I'll just That's at 35,000 feet. Hopefully we're going to get to 39,000 feet. And then it's pretty much on top of all the, the turbulence. We're a little bit too heavy to get up to that altitude at the moment. The, uh, the block altitude is obviously dependent on the air traffic controller that's controlling us at the moment. At the moment we're talking to Johannesburg Oceanic. This little system here is what we call CBDLC and ADS, invented by a very clever man. Uh, it's basically the same as you have in your cell phone. It's a uh, SMS type program. And we talk via satellite to the controller in Johannesburg. A little bit later on, we're going to switch over to the controller in Mauritius. And then from Mauritius, we'll switch over to the controller in Melbourne, possibly Brisbane. And then they will give us a voice communication with Perth when we get to about 300 nautical miles uh, from Perth. We'll be able to speak to, to, uh, to the controller on VHF. If you have a look at this uh, page over here, these are all the directives that we can do to talk to the controller on the ground in Johannesburg. They're lateral and vertical requests, as well as diversions due to weather conditions. And there's a block request here. And if the controller in Johannesburg hasn't got too much traffic or opposite direction traffic, that he can guarantee that we are separated from any other traffic coming uh, from the Australia region that we would encounter tonight, he could give us a clearance to fly from 35,000 feet up to 37,500 foot. It's uh, it, at the moment not worth it for us to ask for that because it's 2,000 foot and it's not too bumpy. But once we get up above our recommended max of 39,000 feet, as we burn our fuel off, then we're going to ask him for a probably more Mauritius. We'll ask for the block altitude. And that means that we can climb or descend within that block. So we would ask for a block tonight of 35,000 to 39,000 feet. And then we can climb and descend as long as we stay within that parameter. And that hopefully we can make the ride a little bit more comfortable for the passengers at the back should we start to encounter this turbulence over here. At the moment it's a very pleasant flight. Um, normally we would have, a, have encountered quite a bit of turbulence on this flight now due to these big crosswind uh, jet streams that we experience over the southern Indian Oceans. And those move laterally with the season. So the closer to winter, the jet streams move further north. Summer, south. So that's why our routing at the moment is up here. You'll probably find, possibly find, that two months ago the uh, routing was well, well south. And this jet stream runs right around the world. It's much like, um, well, they trade winds. And they run from the west to the east. Anything at the moment, you'll see the wind, it's varying a little bit at the moment. It's only from the north west at 100, kilo, uh, 100 kilometers an hour. 
95 kilometers an hour. A little earlier, that uh, that wind speed was uh, the wind was from the north, the southwest, and uh, the speed was 98 knots. So 100 knots would be 180 kilometers an hour. And I've seen that up at 180 miles an hour, and we then would pick up a ground speed well in excess of 600 knots. Our ground speed at the moment is 520 knots, which is a little under 1,000 kilometers an hour. This over here on the weather pattern, that is a thunderstorm at the moment. And associated with that would be some turbulence. But we are well south of it, so it doesn't uh, require us deviating anywhere around it. We may have to deviate a little bit further. Here's some weather coming up around about 150 miles ahead of us. Yeah, good morning. As you can see, daylight outside now. We've been uh, racing towards the sun. And uh, we've just been cleared by the Melbourne controllers to route direct to a position called Keels, which is where we're going to do the entry into Perth International Airport. It's probably just where we're going to start the descent uh, for our approach as well. It's been a fairly instant uh, free evening, not too many bumps. We've managed to miss most of the turbulence. There was a little bit of weather about two hours back, considerable lightning and thunderstorm activity, but nothing to bother us. Aeroplane's behaving nicely. We've uh, Used quite a bit of fuel already, 50,500 kilograms so far, and we have 24,000 kilograms remaining. That sounds quite a lot, but uh, bear in mind we are using Perth as the remote destination, so we have an extra two hours fuel, just for any contingencies that we may need. The weather in Perth is fine at the moment. Uh, the latest report has given us a northeasterly wind uh, that is blowing at uh, 14 knots that's about 25 kilometers an hour and um, the temperature on the ground at the moment is 16 degrees centigrade so that's probably going to warm up to around about 18 19 degrees by lunchtime a nice day in Perth a couple of scattered clouds around the two two and a half thousand foot level so I'm hoping that we'll get a nice uh, view of Perth as we start the descent. And downtown city centre is quite pretty to see. Um, for the rest, we uh, haven't had any problems tonight. Uh, Charles is going to be coming back into the cockpit shortly and then we'll brief on the arrival. At the moment we're doing a uh, planning for landing on the uh, runway 03 at Perth. The wind is 070 at 14 knots. So a bit of a crosswind. And our routing is coming in via this position, sails and waves. Now there's some military uh, flying activity uh, by the Perth military, by the Australian military uh, aircraft in the south here. So they're temporary restricted areas. And they're possibly going to vect us a little bit north to keep us out of their uh, flying area. So this is not a great depiction, but at waves we're expecting to then do a routing. There's waves there. And route down to the south, positioning to 11 mile point for the instrument approach onto runway 03. To go back to the uh, main thing, that instrument approach then would be here. We've got to miss this airfield, which is called Jandakot. Uh, that's a uh, local sort of small aircraft airfield. And then to the north of Perth, around about here, is the military airbase, Pierce Airfield. And we need to stay away from that. So... The arrival will take us here, then down to the south, bearing in mind these restricted areas that the uh, Perth military are using, uh, the Australian military are using. And then we're going to position around about over here. So we'll be 
pretty much overflowing around the Fremantle area with the city of Perth to the left of us and turning around it for our landing on that 03 runway which runs about that direction. So that was that position waves that I talked about coming to the south to the 11 mile point and then landing at Perth and uh, that approach looking at more this is the Fremantle area and the approach will be onto this runway here which is runway 03 the city of Perth is to the west of the main airport and then to the north up here would be the military airfield of Pierce. After landing we're going to be landing on this runway here. They're doing considerable amount of work on the taxiways and surrounds, upgrading everything. Uh, as of yesterday they had completed the work on this area which is where we were anticipating taxiing off. So we're going to have to probably go past the cross runway and route on this taxiway and then back into the international terminal over here. Once we are talking to the air traffic controller and voice, we'll get more clarity because the changeover of the work process only happened at midnight last night. So, approach. We're actually planning to do a, a visual approach onto this runway today because of the nice weather. It'll be assisted by uh, the uh, instrument landing system. So uh, we're probably going to descend down to 2,500 foot before we start the approach. Uh, 3,000 and then 2,500 which is where we'll start the approach down to our landing point. There's not too much traffic around uh, Perth at this time of the day. We'll probably get quite a bit of traffic coming in from the uh, east, which would be from Melbourne and Sydney. But uh, not too much coming in from the west or the north. Um, we'll pick again once we're anticipating speaking to the Perth controllers from about 200 nautical miles out from Perth. which is just before our descent point. Melbourne, Springbuck 280, flight level 390 with Romeo, good morning. Springbuck 280, Melbourne Centre, good morning, identified, star clearance available. Go ahead, Springbuck 280. Springbuck 280, the Brig 1 Alpha arrival, runway 03, when ready, descend flight level 190. Brig 1 Alpha arrival for runway 03, and when ready, descend flight level 190, Springbuck 280. Springbuck 280. Okay, I'm going to change this around again. The Brig 1 Alpha arrival. Brig 1 Alpha, and that's going to take us around that military activity, I think. That's why we're doing it. So I'm going to insert, insert it. Let's go here. Okay, the landing distance procedure factored. We're going to go to 2320. I'm going to brief you on that because we're going to have to go past 06. Okay. There's some runways closed. Okay, and I'm starting the descent. Flight level 190 blue. Mach descent. Director Heiko. Yes. And uh, for the continuing with the Briggs 1 Alpha arrival for runway 03 in Perth. That's right. Um, the FMGS has been programmed and checked. The only modification 
was 190 knots for the go round. Checked. And 250 knots below level 100. Yes. That chart was uh, 22nd of May, effective 28th of May. And uh, the MSA within 25 nautical miles of Perth is 3,000 foot. The yep. uh, grid moor at the moment is 1,500 foot. And the airfield elevation is uh, 70 feet. So if we make the red box from 3,000 foot down. Yes. I'm happy. The approach we're expecting, uh, sorry, the uh, approach we're expecting is the ILS Zulu runway 03. Uh, page 11 1, it is effective from the 11th of April 2014. Yes. Frequencies at the top. And uh, the ILS is on 110.1 India Papa November. Yep. We'll be intercepting the glide slope at 2,500 foot. Wow, at 3,000 foot. Yes. And a 5 dB check height of 1,650. Yes. And uh, after landing, they've been doing this runway rehabilitation and taxi rehabilitation, but last night was a changeover. So at the moment, the only taxiway that's closed is Papa. Right. Which would be our normal taxi off. So we're going to go beyond 06 and taxi at November, which is now open. Yes. And then expecting to turn right onto Charlie, crossing runway 0624. By level 190 you will uh, enter the forecasted area on your descent. Thank you. Swing by 280. So 19,000 to 10,000. Yep. Okay, so then we're expecting to turn right onto Charlie. Yes. And then with their clearance cross 04, uh, 0624, entering from uh, Tango for Bay 51, which is the last finger on the right. And it's yes. deep rest. Deep rest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, however, in the event of a missed approach, I'll call go around flaps. Thrust levers to Togar come straight back to climb, one notch up, rotate to the go around attitude. Follow the SRS, call the FMA, positive climb, gear up. Ensure an autopilot's engaged and manage the nav. The missed approach is in the uh, FMGS. It's one modification. Three miles, turn left, 190 knots towards Rotnest. Checked. Weather-wise, as we can see, there's a bit of cloud around. It's clear at the airfield. Yes. However, they've just told us that we're going to experience icing, moderate to severe from level 190 to flight level 100, or 10,000 foot. Check. So we'll keep an eye on that for the uh, icing usage. Yes. And then there's a maximum crosswind of 12 knots. Okay. At the moment, which isn't a problem for us. Right. And it's dry at the airfield. Operationally, there's no problem. So we're going to start the APU. Yep. So that they can approach the airport. Absolutely. And... Uh, Fuel, we've uh, we landed with 18.7. The requirement is to land with 30 minutes, so we've got more than two and a half hours to sit here and try and wait for something to get fixed. Okay, so lots of time to play with. Checked, I've taken low on the order braking because we're landing at 176,500. Yes, and as discussed, the uh, landing distance procedure has been calculated. In fact, that we should use 2,320 feet with reverse thrust and low on the auto brake. Yes. Anything else you would like to add there, Charles? Nothing from my side, sir. And then, as, as we discussed on the road time there, the circling approach minimum is to be used. Absolutely. It's for the visual. And we're using 1440, which is below where we would intercept the glide slope anyway. So you've got that check height at 5 miles of 1440. Um, sorry, check height at 5 miles of 1650. 1650, yes. Which is at 210 foot above the circling height required. Checked. Lovely. Charles, I have a... M been a bit remiss because we got a bit uh, sidetracked. Would you mind handing the radio? I'm just going to chat to the passengers. 100%. Quickly. 
I've got it. Very good morning to you all, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the flight deck. Captain speaking. As you can see, we're busy, busy with our descent into Perth uh, Airport. We have a little over 140 kilometres to run, and at the moment they are vectoring us to position to the south of the city for our landing on the runway 03. There's uh, quite a stiff northeasterly wind blowing around about the 25, 30 kilometre mark. Uh, the temperature is very pleasant, 17 degrees centigrade. And we'll be touching down right on schedule at 25 minutes past one in the afternoon. If you haven't set your watches yet, it's just come up three minutes past one local in Western Australia. Uh, just a word of caution, up ahead there is a little bit of cloud cover. They have warned us of some icing, and with that I'm expecting a little bit of turbulence. So we'll be putting the seatbelt signs on uh, fairly early. It's going to be a little bit of discomfort possibly, but nothing to concern yourselves with. Checked. Passing 20,500 now. Checked. Briefing is confirmed. Ecom status is checked. Seat belts can go on now. Barra ref. 1018 set. Minimum. Uh, uh, Nineteen ninety-five, maintaining flow. MDA three hundred twenty-six. MDA three twenty set. Engine start select as normal. Approach checklist completed. Approach Springbuck two eight zero heavy with information Sierra. Good day. Zero heavy Perth approach. Could I descend to nine thousand? Descend to nine thousand. Swing by two eight zero. Nine thousand blue. And the tower is standing by one two zero five. One two zero five checked. Okay. Up ahead, you've uh, got Rotnest Island, which is a resort island. And then just ahead of it, you can see the Swan River running up through to Perth. The city of Perth, and just beyond it is the airfield. And this is the port of Fremantle up ahead, where most of their uh, operations are. Further to the south is the... Um, Margaret River area. Springbok 280, descend to 5000. Descend to 5000, Springbok 280. 5000 blue, checked. Cancel the uh, set uh, left turn heading 210, 4000, uh, flight lock 612. 1213, cut a tower, 120, decimal 5. 120, decimal 5, corner 1213, good day.
Fremont 280, descend to 3000, cleared ILS runway 03 approaching. Descend to 3000, cleared ILS runway 03 approach, Springbok 280. Okay, 3000. <coughs> Glide slope lock blue, Cat 3 dual, Check. AP 1 and 2. Check. And that's an out constraint. Check. Whiskey, Whiskey, Lehman, I observe traffic in the Fremantle area, identification terminated, frequency change approved, good day. Whiskey, Whiskey, Lehman, cheers. Thanks, Charles. Flap, flap one, please. Speed checked. Flaps one. Kevin is ready. And a gotcha. You can see the main airport in the distance. This airport has the private, uh, the small aircraft, Jandakot. Thousand feet to go. Checked. Checked. Light steps alive. Thank you. Lock. Check. Would you like flap two? Uh, just short. Spring lock 280, contact tower 120, decimal five, good day. 1205, spring lock 280. Glide slip's nearly there. Yeah, thank you. Flap two, please. Speed check. Descent. Flap two. Tower spring lock 280, you'll be good day. Glide slope storm, Mr. Crow, Charles. Continue approach for my 03. Spring by 280. Uh, the data contact approach, 123.6. 123.6, how did you get Red out. Checked. Get on, please. Flap three, please. Speed check. Quite a nice view of downtown Perth today. Five miles now. Thank you. Flap full. Speed check. Flaps full. And a landing checklist. Landing checklist is... Cabin crew. Advised. Auto thrust. Speed. Auto brake. Low. ECAM memo. Landing, no blue. Landing checklist completed.
from the left so it's veering I mean backing check one thousand crouch stable here very unstable there Continuing visually, check autopilot out. Check three single. Four hundred. Hundred above. Three hundred. Minimum. Two hundred. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. Okay, it says an A340, 300. Check. Oh, it looks like it's captured us. Has it captured us? Yeah. yeah. Happy is available. Thank you. Back is on and chocks are on. It's Joss. Some last welcome to Perth. Lovely day here for a, for a winter's day. It was beautiful visibility coming in. One of the clearest I've seen uh, coming in in the winter. As you can see, lots of work going on in the international terminal now. They are extending this considerably, becoming a busy hub of Australia. It's been a great pleasure being with you, and uh, we look forward to our return journey. I hope you've enjoyed your time on board this Airbus 340-300.